Hi everybody, just before we get into the video, we just wanted to let you know that this is a kind of ongoing incident at the moment with the MoveIt software, and there's been a number of breaches due to this kind of zero day vulnerability existing in some of these major organizations in the UK. The NCSE has already come out to say they're investigating the impact on the UK, and obviously they're doing more research. So we think that there's still more to come. At the time of recording the video as well, there's no evidence of any sort of extortion or the outcomes of these breaches. We know there's data that's been stolen from some major organizations uh, through the exploitation of the MoveIt software and, and a major payroll provider in the UK, which we talk about in the video. But we think there's more to come. So we just wanted to let everybody know before there's lots of questions around what is the impact and what does this mean for everybody uh, that we're gonna do a part two and, and sort of explain it a bit more at a later stage. The one last thing I would say as well, we do know that there are still, as we talk about in the video, uh, vulnerable, it seems vulnerable systems out there and organizations should identify if they have anything that could be vulnerable and uh, fix it as soon as possible. So in the comments, we'll supply uh, the vendor advice on how to fix it. Anyway, on with the video and we hope you enjoy. Uh, make sure you like and share it because it's a serious issue that we want everybody to, to get to know about. In this video, we're gonna look at a recent cybersecurity incident that has leaked tons of payroll information, names, addresses, national insurance numbers, and bank account details from companies such as British Airways, the BBC, and Boots. This incident appears to have originated from a zero day vulnerability in a piece of software called Move It, used by a company called Zealous, a market leader in HR and payroll in the UK. For those that don't know, a zero day vulnerability is a software vulnerability that has been discovered by attackers before a vendor is aware of it and have some sort of patch or remediation for the finding. Microsoft have confirmed that this notorious Russian ransomware gang, Klopp, is to be blamed for the incident and in the past they've been targeting other critical infrastructure companies, which makes sense for this particular attack. Now, security researchers were sounding the alarm back in May uh, with a flaw in the MoveIt software, but it was too late and the Klopp group were already working hard to exploit tons of systems out there using this SQL injection vulnerability. We've done a bit of digging ourselves and found there are over 600 servers still connected to the internet that we can see that may still be vulnerable and need to be patched as quickly as possible based on the review of the situation to date. There are a number of products that are not vulnerable, by the way, uh, that we will provide in the uh, comment section below. Now, although this is down to a third party software issue, it highlights the importance of understanding how your business supply chain works. Not all vendors that you or your business work with have the same level of cybersecurity maturity. By knowing the nature of a vendor's service, the data they handle and the systems they have access to, you can conduct a thorough risk assessment which enables you to identify potential situations and implement the appropriate safeguards. So reach out to your vendors and ask them about their security practices, certifications, and incident response capabilities. This due diligence helps to ensure that their security measures align with your organization's standards. Establish a clear contractual agreements with your vendors regarding cybersecurity responsibilities and incident response protocols. By understanding their role and your expectations, you can hold them accountable for their security operations. And finally, don't get complacent with your vendors. Keep up to date with their activities and patch especially if they're handling employees or customer personal data. Take proactive approach to ensure that potential risks are mitigated before they become a significant security threat. A lot of the attacks we still see are opportunistic, but in this case, it was a very targeted attack aimed at creating disruption, and the group itself was well-funded and not your typical hacker. Finding zero-day vulnerabilities is really hard and requires specific skills, knowledge, and intent. The group went out of its way to look for a specific set of targets and found a way through their supplier. This highlights the fact that compliance does not equal secure. This particular vendor, MoveIt, had a lot of compliance certifications behind them, but uh, what was clear was that they were still breached anyway, and I guess you could argue that they were breached through a zero day and a very targeted attack um, that many vendors wouldn't know how to detect, and there was no patch for that. So we have to take that into consideration, but for other organizations, what compliance does is it makes sure that you've got a good process should you get breached, and you know exactly what you need to do and you've tested that process. And for the vendors out there developing software and solutions, here's just some advice from me around the things you can do to mitigate those risks of things like SQL injection and specifically application attacks. Number one, make sure you're implementing uh, technologies to scan your code to make sure you're checking for obvious areas where an attacker might be able to inject commands into your systems. Number two, implement things like application firewalls because they're a good way to protect against the known attacks. And some of them can do pretty good uh, detection of anomalies and sort of malicious activity from attackers that don't require signatures. Uh, number three, make sure you're doing uh, regular penetration testing, especially things like application testing. 
And also don't exclude your APIs because there are ways in which to do things like SQL injection uh, through APIs as well as your application front end. And last but not least, make sure you're regularly monitoring your systems to look for suspicious activity in your logs.